Well, welcome everyone. I am uh, Mikhail Golovny, a senior scientist at Salford Systems. And in this short video, uh, I'm going to talk about how to build a simple binary classification model using TreeNet, uh, also known as stochastic gradient boosting. Uh, and just as a reminder, in the classification world, like when we need to build a classification model, what we usually mean is that the response variable has uh, typically two outcomes. So for example, uh, from the bank's point of view, uh, there could be the concept of a customer being good or being bad, or a good credit standing versus uh, someone going delinquent. So these types of problems that have two separate outcomes uh, generally fall under the category of classification, and I'll show how to model uh, this type of uh, problem using TreeNet. So let's see how it's done. Uh, I have a Salford Predictive Modeler 7.0 running on my machine. So at first, I need to open a data set. So I click File, Open, Open Data Set. Uh, I have a simple ASCII data set called credit.csv. Uh, available for demonstration here. And of course, if you have other data formats, all you need to do is click on files of type and pick the right data format. As long as it's uh, in a flat table, you can always access it. So credit.csv, I click open button. As you can see, this is a fairly large uh, data set in terms of number of records. Uh, but it only has only a few key variables like debt ratio, monthly income, number of dependents. Uh, what the, the data set does, it lists a number of uh, uh, clients of the given bank, and each client has been already tagged as either being delinquent or not. And our goal here is to build a classification model using TreeNet that will try to predict the odds of someone being delinquent. Or another way to say, we want to see what is the probability that someone is going to be delinquent. So I click on the model button. Uh, notice my variables can be sorted in either alphabetical order or file order. Uh, ID is of no interest in this case, so I'll just go straight into the delinquent variable and click it as a target. And also notice I'm talking about TreeNet application here, so under analysis method, I'm going to go ahead and click on the TreeNet option. And because delinquency is uh, encoded in this data set as a binary target, yes, no type of target, I'm going to switch to logistic binary as my primary modeling mode in this case. Now, TreeNet also allows modeling uh, targets that have more than two different states, and that's the general classification. That part we can talk about uh, in some other video. Logistic binary delinquent is the target. I can highlight all of the remaining variables other than the ID variable and use them as uh, predictors. Uh, whenever we build data mining applications, we usually want to have an independent set uh, to test the performance of our models. So in this case, I'll use the simplest uh, approach available, which is given the size of my data set, will be just 50% of records randomly separated and allocated as uh, a test sample. Now, the tree net itself has a number of uh, interesting controls, uh, and it is not the purpose of this uh, short introduction to cover them all in depth, but typically what you would normally want to set up is the number of individual iterations that the process uh, will go through, individual tree size, and the learn rate. So in this case, 10% uh, learn rate would be a good starting point. In some cases, later on, you may try smaller learn rates. You may also experiment with the trade-off between learn rate and the number of trees. Uh, and in this case, uh, because it is a classification problem, there are different ways to evaluate performance of classification problems. And what's typically used out there in the, in the industry is something generally known as area under ROC curve. So in this specific run, I will try to build a classification model that maximizes the resulting area under ROC curve. Um, the rest of the options, I'll just keep them at the default values. 
Uh, at this point, I'm ready to click on the Start button. Uh, what happens is that now the engine loads all the data, uh, pre-processes them, and then proceeds by building all of the individual modeling components. And again, it's not very critical to understand exactly what it does and how it does, as long as you know uh, some general guidelines how to set up model parameters and more importantly how to read the resulting models or what you see on the display. Okay, so we got the tree net output here and notice there is this graph at the bottom part of the screen. It shows the area under ROC curve indexed by the number of trees and the number of trees is simply the model size or how complex the model gets. So you start with the very simple models that have only a few trees and gradually progress into more and more models. And what the software also pointed out for you is that if you look at the test performance uh, which is indicated by red curve uh, then the area under ROC curve is maximized once we have 60 trees in the model and specifically that area is 0.769, the red number here, or 76.9%, uh, which is generally considered uh, a fairly good result. Like anywhere we go above 0.7, you're already starting to get interesting models. So having done this uh, simple modeling round, and uh, the performance looks more or less okay at this point, and also notice learn and test performance curves uh, they reasonably follow each other, so there is not much overfitting that goes on. Uh, now I can proceed uh, by looking at the overall summaries. The summary button is available here, uh, and once you clicked on it, you have uh, access to that wealth of different performance information, like the overall model summaries, uh, gains in ROC curves, uh, odds ratios, hosmer lemyshov statistics, but for the typical initial application, what you would normally look at is first variable importance table, which gives you an intuition in terms of which variables have been selected and which variables are most uh, participating in driving the predictions done by the model. And in this case, revolving utilization, which is uh, essentially how much of the available credit is being utilized each month, happens to be on the very top. But there's a next important one is the debt ratio, which is normally how much debt you have or how much debt you carry over from statement to statement. Uh, as well as all the others, as you can see in this case, Trinet had no difficulty extracting a little bit of signal from pretty much every available uh, variable here. Another way to look at it, sometimes people uh, build uh, classification models for the sole purpose of making predictions and the predictions are described in a so-called prediction success table uh, and if I have the prediction success table tab here I can see that if I were to apply my current model to the current set of clients then based on that independent test sample I would roughly approximate like 73% correct predictions of who is in a good credit standing and 68-69% correct if I were to predict if someone is in a bad credit standing. So depending on what you look at, you may have either interest in prediction success or area under ROC curve and uh, those would be some of the typical applications on how to look at the performance of classification models. Now, one other thing before we uh, finish, uh, in addition to just seeing whether you have a good or bad performing classification model, it's always very interesting to see how, very, how exactly individual predictors contribute to model performance. And that information is generated for you automatically and is available when you click on Display Plots button. Now here, I've configured SVM such that it automatically generates one variable dependence plots for all of the variables that were picked uh, during model building setup. And in this case, let's focus on the debt ratio, which is one of the interesting variables that's being used by our model. Once I open debt ratio, you see this graph over here. And uh, 
without going into greater detail, the graph kind of communicates uh, what happens to your probability of uh, going delinquent, uh, to be more precise in technical terms, what actually happens to the half log odds of you're going to be delinquent, if, uh, for those of you who know what it means. Uh, but in general, as the debt ratio increases, you may notice that somewhere above 0.4, there is this rising trend towards that probability of going delinquent. And that's the, essentially what we've done here. We've discovered something that is known in financial industry for quite some time, and that is that as soon as the people start utilizing more than about 35-40% of their available credit and carry it over for months to months, then at some point it's a kind of a warning that maybe things are not going right with that case. Also notice, you may not see it right away, but the curve on the left starts uh, at the negative value, and that is the point that corresponds to zero debt ratio. That's someone who pays off their debt every month without having any outstanding balances uh, that are carried over. So again, with a very simple uh, uh, tree net application, we managed not only to extract a model that is uh, interesting to look at, but we're also gaining some nonlinear, uh, I mean, some insights that explain the behavior of the variables and predictors in some nonlinear way. And of course, you can always simplify this plot using some of this fancy splines machinery here uh, by picking some uh, cut points and then perhaps switching to first order splines to approximate this. Uh, curve that was obtained by TreeNet by something much simpler that in my case has two separate straight lines merged at that special uh, value of 0.4. And if you're also interested in using that spline equation and follow-up work, you can always click on the View Models button and either see the card basic representation of the transformations or SAS the representation of these transformations. And the code itself essentially tells you how to take the original variable, debt ratio in my, my case, and using this simple set of statements, transform it into debt ratio spline version that is represented by the green lines here that can be used uh, as part of uh, a follow-up study or, say, some kind of reporting. So that's pretty much it in terms of how you can uh, build a very simple um, classification, binary classification model using TreeNet. All you need to have is a data set, the target variable, access to the software, and a very simple kind of uh, uh, initial understanding of some of the key control parameters and also how to interpret the output. Now, TreeNet builds models by looking into the data, so there's no preliminary assumptions that you have to make. You don't have to specify the type of model or the functional form. Everything is done for you and it's extracted on the go. Now you look at the results and then make the final decisions whether you want to tweak the model further or it's already good enough. And in many cases, running even initial TreeNet uh, runs on uh, the data set that you, have, you haven't seen before will already be good enough to give you some very important, interesting insights and boost your level of understanding of what kind of problem you're dealing with. So that's it for now. Uh, later on, we'll talk more about all of the individual parts that I skipped in this video.